The difference between an agent and a realtor is real. The ethics to do the right thing, even when it's the harder thing. That's who we are. All right, welcome. That commercial gets me every time. It does. It's an awesome commercial. I absolutely, it absolutely love it. You know, it's it's Fair Housing Month, and of course, you know, it, it was just the right timing for that. So. Uh, welcome. It's uh, Let's Talk Real Estate with Rob and Maria McArthur, Maryland Homes Team at Remax Components. We're super excited that you're joining with us tonight. We have we a are. jam-packed uh, schedule of things we're going to discuss. Uh, I'm really happy. It's a great day. It's, it's been, been a great a, day. A great day. Right before we walked into the studio, we got one of our favorite phone calls ever, and that was letting us know our wonderful, wonderful first-time home buyers they're, got their contract accept it that we submitted late last we're, night we're pretty excited about that so absolutely we are so happy they are getting married in september and they want it to be all ready and they will be they will be that's right all right we're going to talk about uh, all kinds of things uh we're going to talk about real estate how to best position yourself when you're buying or you're selling a home we're going to talk about also the top renovation regrets that homeowners engage in uh, with their homes. We're going to talk about what those regrets are. And believe it or not, we're just going to slide into towards the end of the show. We're going to talk about Costco's hot uh, buys for the spring of 2023. I, I have my own We're going to talk list. about that. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more just as soon as we get back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're super excited that you're joining with us. Uh, it's going to be a great uh, a great show this evening. Uh, so, mu so many things going on in the marketplace right now. A big shout out, by the way, to Sparrows Point. I guess it's Sparrows Point Country Club. Is it that what is. you'd call it? Yep. It Sparrows is. Point Con Country Club. They treated us to an awesome uh, breakfast. We had a broker meeting there. Uh, we had another meeting that followed that as well. So we actually was there for for breakfast and lunch. So uh, I'm pretty full. But uh, what a great, if you've ever had a chance uh, to kind of just drive through uh, Sparrows Point Golf uh, Course, uh, that's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, nice waterfront area. The Country Club, big waterfront area. Um, so it's it's really awesome, and uh, so so that's that. I thought so, there was a moth flying in the office. It scared me to death. You did, <laughs> exactly. Did. If scary. you're watching us on YouTube, by the way, um, please feel free to uh, smash that subscribe button and subscribe so you can follow us on our live programs uh, that are coming up. Okay, and Chloe said we're not supposed to say smash anywhere. That's not trendy. Smash is not trendy, so I'm you know, glad. So we, we have to figure out a, our, we've got to figure young, out a new word. Young adult and teenage children to That's keep right. us up to date. You can follow us on any of the social media that you see there. Facebook, we are on Instagram. Also, we do stream live to LinkedIn. Uh, we have a Twitter account. Yes, you will find us dancing on uh, Twitter, by the on TikTok. Um, TikTok, by the way, not Twitter, yeah, and also <laughs> exactly. And um, I don't know why I don't have Twitter on here, by the way, because we are streaming live to Twitter as well, and uh, we do know. stream live, obviously, to uh, uh, to Facebook. Not my um, yep, exactly. Please feel free also to meet, reach out to through us through our team merch account. Uh, we have all kinds of mugs and backpacks and T-shirts and things like that um, that that sports a lot of our uh, paraphernalia. Um, so if we happen to see you walking around town, by the way, with one of our T-shirts or mugs or something, we may just have a little gift card in our pocket to hand to you. So we just want to let you know yeah. that. Um, so Citing. people. That's right. The kids' friends used to cite my truck when my name was on the back of it, which I never wanted my name on the back of my truck. That's right. Because then I couldn't drive the way I want to. But yep. anyway. This is a question and answer format, by the way. So if you have any questions, any uh, comments or anything you'd like to, uh, like to make, please feel free to do that in the box below, whatever uh, platform you're watching us from. And we'll be sure to uh, throw that up on the screen and we can uh, kind of dialogue. And that's what makes the show a whole lot of fun. Um, also, if you are a client, a current client of ours, a past client, 
uh, of ours, you definitely want to join our MHT All-Stars, MHT All-Stars on Facebook. It's a closed Facebook group, and that from that page, uh, we offer all types of different prizes and contests and giveaways, and we do pop-up events and yeah. things like that. Um, so we actually have one that's coming up here uh, soon, and I just wanted to share with you. Maria, how about that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, do you want me to give details Good. or what? Well, you don't have to give me details other than, hey, it's MHT All-Stars at the movies. We've done yes. this several times, and we just want to share with you that there is an awesome movie coming up, by the way, yeah, Guardians you're of the Galaxy. somebody, or did who? you add them? Who am did, I missing on the, on the thing? Who, I'm not missing who, anyone. You, I thought you did previously, or did you add them? Yes. Uh, if you're a current client, past client, you know, we definitely want to make sure that you have an opportunity uh, to engage and, and uh, be invited to a like lot of our, our events. Yep, like our page and things like that. So, If you're a um, former, current, or soon-to-be client. That's right, exactly. Let us know. Yep, yep, exactly. So, uh, again, it's a Q&A format, so please feel free to comment, leave some comments, uh, put some questions up uh, for us as we're going through the show, and we would love to, uh, to be able to engage uh, with you. So hopefully everyone's able to follow us and pick back up where kind of like where we left off. So I think some people I see I see the view counts kind of popping up there. So I really appreciate everybody joining uh, with us. We had just lost stream for a minute or so there. But uh, let's kind of move on here. And we've got uh, the show content for this evening. This is what we're going to talk about. So how to best position yourself uh, when buying or selling a home. Uh, the most expensive renovations uh, that homeowners always regret uh, we're going to talk about that. And, of course, Costco's hot, Costco's hot buys uh, this spring. We're going to discuss uh, that as well. And uh, let's go ahead and move along. And we have our awesome guest with us. He's been on the show before. Let's give a big round of applause for uh, Carlo Buendia. Carlo, thank you very much, my friend. For That's right, exactly. So how are you doing? Exactly. So how are you doing? Carlo, you're frozen. Carlo is frozen, so not only is Carlo frozen right now, but uh, we had also lost our stream a few minutes ago, and people are just now joining on. Carlo, you there? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes, yes he's back on. Exactly. Hey, I'm back. Yeah, so we're just asking, uh, how was your day? Oh, it's been a productive day. Had some maintenance done to my car, which obviously is very important for me to get around there and you on uh, while he uh, fixes his stream there uh, as he's streaming in live to us and uh, how to best position yourself as a he's buyer back. as a buyer yeah we're just going to keep moving on with the discussion okay so it's how to best position yourself as a buyer um, that's what we're going to talk about right now and uh, so the first thing is you know in most cases obviously Carlos we back, honey. yeah it's fine yeah I got you but he can follow along with us and we'll just comment along as we're doing the show in most cases you know it's still a competitive environment. Uh, that we're in, uh, buyers must be pre-approved. There's no question about it, Carl. I'm sure you agree. Uh, and consider giving up certain concessions to be the winning offer, right? And then, of course, the Absolutely. third thing, and we'll, and we'll discuss these in, in detail, but let me just uh, uh, share, obviously, you know, you want to work with a team to review in detail the property, the location, the neighborhood, and recent sold comparables. So, Carl, have you, have you dealt with this, obviously, over the past several weeks with your clients? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the inventory is not huge. So sometimes you won't have a million comps to look at. But, you know, typically, every home that's being sold is increasing the price of the neighborhood, pretty much majority of the time. So, you know, when you come in as that new contract, you want to make it strong and position yourself with good financing and make your contract as appealing as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And I really think in the last two weeks, I, I thought we had hit a, uh, not a, I was going to say like a, a I can't even think of the word plateau that we hit a plateau <laughs> where prices were just kind of stabilizing and we weren't having 20 offers. We were having two to three, and then that lasted like maybe a week, and now we're back to um, eight, nine, ten offers. I think Carlo, you you had a listing in Columbia that you had what eight or nine offers, and I saw a few more come in last night past the deadline, you know, for that house. So that was competitive. Yeah, we had you know around thirty showings, and you know it really depends. But 
depending upon the area, you know, some are more sought after by buyers. And um, I feel like this whole year for me has been competitive with the properties. My buyers tend to like the home that everybody else likes. But, right. <laughs> but yeah, but most certainly within the last two weeks, I think as a whole, a lot of agents have said, hey, we're got multiple contract situations once again. So that's only going to continue to grow, I think, into the summer. So you just got to have your best game when you're coming to win these properties. Yeah, I find that a lot of the national stats um, right now, the, the market stats don't really reflect 100% of what we're dealing with here locally. Yeah. Um, what we're dealing with here local price Depending yes. on obviously the location, because homeowner home home buyers are obviously being a little bit more finicky in what they're looking for. You know, they're not really willing to go in at this point and waive all inspections and things like that. But there's certain pockets of our region that they they unfortunately going to have to do that if they want to be competitive. If they want that winning offer to be accepted by the seller, they're going to have to give up some concessions. Maybe move around the time frame of when they're going to be able to settle on the property and, and things of that nature, maybe even uh, bring an appraisal gap in if they're going to come in over list price. So um, right now, what I would tell sellers, and I think you would agree, Carlo, as well, that, you know, uh, you know, you need to be, uh, your property needs to have curb appeal and needs to have proper updates and things like that. And you're going to see a lot of buyers come, you know, come and see your property, come out of the woodwork and, uh, and make those offers that you're, you're really looking for, you know, but it's our job, obviously, as a team, we want to make sure that we educate our buyers enough. We show them the comparables. We talk about the location, the absolute details of the property, and best position themselves to be that winning offer. Like the phone. Someone that was with their group was like, you know, let, let's come in five or 10,000 less. And I'm like, yeah. You're not even going to have a chance. I mean, that's just the truth. You're mm -hmm. not going to have a chance. Why would you get your hopes up, sign? A 60 page document and you don't have a chance you know we want to put you where you have a good chance you know and um and i'm like you know we're not going to blow smoke at you we're going to be straight up with what the truth is you know that's how everyone on our team is and at the same time looking out for your best interest yeah exactly so yeah if you're if you're looking at a hot area a hot property that just came on the market you can see that there's multiple showings that are going to be occurring on that property and if you have a buyer that's going to say hey look you know, we, we hear in the national news that the market is changing, things like that. We want to come in, you know, $10,000 under uh, under uh, list. the list price. And if as long as the comparables are, are there, you know, you, we're basically, ha you know, we're going to hear this. You know, it's, you know, you're not, <laughs> sellers are not going to hear that. Is that like a dad joke? Can I do that as a dad I'm joke? I'm not sure. I'm like, <laughs> is that Charlie Brown? Or I was going to say, that almost sounds like peanuts. Peanuts, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Peanuts. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So or, when the parents maybe, only when the parents were talking, remember? That, yeah, that's right. Only. Oh, well, the teacher, too. So remember when the teacher's oh, yeah, talking. Right, yeah. right, right. When the, <laughs> that's right. stupid. That's terrible. Actually, it reminded me of one of your TikToks with um, what was your friend's name that was on your TikTok in the beginning? Oh, gosh, Mikey? I can't remember. What yeah, was Mikey. It? Was Mikey. It Mikey? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Yeah, I, I think, think it, was. it was. I don't know. It's anyway, on my TikTok channel, so you can anyway, watch it there. But uh, um, so the next thing is, obviously, you want to partner with a local mortgage broker. I would highly encourage that. I think, Carlo, uh, do you agree with that as well? Absolutely. And I mean, sometimes uh, you might see on a listing that the agent will leave certain remarks for us to see, and they will suggest that their client would prefer to see a local lender as opposed to somebody that's out of state or an online mortgage broker that, you know, quite frankly, you know, doesn't always make the transaction as smooth as you would like. And they're not always well versed with the different things from state to state that, you know, can just make it a little bit of a hassle or some more fees and things that people just don't want to deal with. So someone that's local that knows the you know, area and the different things that come with it um, will make for a much more smoother transition and transaction altogether. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. And I think uh, with some of our lenders, I, I remember hearing from another agent, oh, we worked with them before. 
So if they're in that circle, they're in the area, you know, people have already worked with them and then they're like, oh, we know that they're going to close that loan with no problems. You know, uh, we probably have two that we learned the hard way um, that they didn't get closed on time. And one, they let us know like the day before. So leading us to say we had the seller, we did not have the buyer. Um, we would not personally recommend that for our buyer ever, you know. Of course, nobody wants to tell their buyer you're not going to be able to close because you didn't get the loan. You know, that's yeah. why a lender is really important. You yeah. do all that hard good. work to get there. Yeah, exactly. So Sorry, we. Sorry, Carla, what were you going to say? Yeah. I said a good one. It's important to have a good one that, you know, knows what they're doing, that's experienced, and, you know, that guides you, I mean, the right way, you know, because if you, you know, do what you're supposed to do, you can present and make that client look a lot better if they're pretty much near close to loan approval as possible. Yeah, that's Correct. right. Exactly. I know we already discussed this as far as, you know, offering a shorter contingency periods, maybe the closing time frames. Uh, I know we didn't discuss anything about the, the contingency periods, but yeah, if you're going to come in contingent, um, whether it's a home inspection rate on whatever, you know, you want to be able to shorten those period, uh, those time frame frames up. And also keep this in mind. A lot of people don't realize this. Lenders know realtors too. So having them call the listing agent, you know, you're representing the buyer, but having them call before they start looking and reviewing the other offers, you know, uh, let them speak on behalf on behalf of your 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 buyer. Sometimes they're the greatest uh, cheerleader for your buyer, and they can share uh, some of their financial strengths and things like that. So I think many times that's helpful. Uh, in fact. Um, you know, I reported to my seller one time when we received 25 offers on a property, believe it or not, up in Bell Camp, and I reported to them that the lender did reach out to me and had a very strong financial position, um, you know, that he represented uh, to the buyer. And I was very impressed with that. I was very and of course, encouraged the by that has, and impressed. Yeah. You know, permission from yeah. that buyer to share that information. When it's not well, it depends on what kind of information they're sharing, but right, I do agree. Right. It's not yeah. like, you know, your credit scoring, you know, all your credit limits and things like that. Yep, exactly. You know? So let's discuss how to best position yourself uh, if you are a seller. So when we're talking about that, the top questions that sellers ask, these are the top questions. Number one, how can I make my house more valuable and sell faster? I um, mean, this was based off of Google, by the way. We had Googled these and came up with these stats. And, you know, and how do you get the most profit from selling my house? Uh, that's another question. So, you know, the first one, you know, how can I make my house more valuable and sell faster? Carlo, is that is that a question that you think is uh, um, uh, you know do you do you, do you what, what is your input on that? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely things that people want to know what they need to do um, to sell their house, but a lot of times this question probably takes place well before a listing because um, I'll get a lot of clients that when they are looking to maybe renovate their kitchen or their bathroom. They'll ask me, hey, should I get this style cabinetry or this countertop or flooring? And a lot of times I'll let them know, you know, what could potentially help them get back, you know, their return on investment per se. Um, so those are some things where putting money in certain areas certainly can make your house more valuable and, of course, will be you know, appealing and sell faster to people. So for sure. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we're still in a market that if it looks good and location is good, it's going to sell. I know I showed a house three weeks ago. I walked in and it was a buy level. The minute you walked in, you see the steps. So the paint was scrolly, was horrible on the steps, not a straight line at all. The banister was shaking when you walked up the steps. Brand new kitchen, but with two doors hanging off, right? And the back deck, um, the back deck, I was even nervous to even walk on. And, and I thought to myself, and there were people leaving when I came in, and there were people waiting for me when I left because the price point was so low. That's why. Well, I checked yesterday, and it's still on the market. And, yeah. and you know... Like I said, if it looks good, if it's, you know, the things that Carlo's recommending to his seller to do or not to do, we don't want you to spend money that you don't need to spend, um, you know, and if it's a good location, it's going to sell. Sure. Yeah. 
No, I agree. And Car- Carl and Maria, you know, I'm looking at these questions. Obviously, these are sell- these are the top questions that sellers have asked uh, when they're typing in in Google. By the way, so one, three, and four really is telling. I think they kind of go hand in hand with how we need to position ourselves as agents, uh, our team, to be able to share with our seller what do they need to do to obviously maintain or bring up the value of their home, what type of improvements, things like that. Um, and what can they do? Number three is really telling, by the way, how do I prote- protect myself when selling a home? That's really important because I think that's where, Carlo, you probably agree with me, Maria, as well, that this is where we can really show our value as agents in our marketplace is to be able to tell them from from number one, A through Z, you know, what we do as an agent for them to protect them uh, through the entire process. You know, we're marketing the property, obviously, we're listing it, we're calling the photographer, we're, you know, compiling information, we're doing our due diligence on behalf of our seller, um, but at the same time, we're trying to get the, keep them protected in the contract. Um, what do you think of that, Carlo? Yeah, I mean, I'll go back real quick to number one, just because we didn't give any specifics for that, but kitchen and bathrooms are still the top thing that you want to focus on if you really want to get your best bang for your buck. Um, Flooring, um, you know, the luxury vinyl is really in because people love their pets and people are, you know, want something that's durable, basically, where they can spill stuff and do things. And that flooring has really come a long way. So, and then even like outdoor structures like, you know, decks and, you know, making your patio and, you know, those type of things that can add value and living space um, to enjoy the outside and just having a good curb appeal, I would say, because people are going to be riding by the houses before they see them these days. And uh, you want to have your best foot forward when you're, you know, having your curb appeal redone. And now's the perfect time with the landscaping. Um, But then in regards to protecting yourself, um, you know, our big job is to make sure that you have the proper paperwork in place. Um, Every property has different things that come about. You know, if your home's built before 1978, you want to have things in regards to lead-based paint in there. And then there's new documents that come out every so often, too. Like recently, our contracts um, in Maryland specifically have updated and we're able to put in these disclosures and disclaimers so that way everybody um, is protected and, you know, are able to make the proper disclosures to, you know, the buyers. And it's just, you know, we're there to help make sure that everything's run properly and smoothly. And these are just some things that, you know, how else would you know unless you're, you know, doing um, real estate day in and day out. So that's right. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That's agent. that's why use, using the right uh, agent matters, using the right team at matters. So, yeah, I certainly appreciate that. So, you know, again, going back to how to best position yourself as a seller, you know, start a conversation early with our real estate team. You want to be able to start as early as possible. Carl, do you agree? You know, three to four months. To oh, start absolutely. Because, I mean, yeah, nobody wants to, you know, rush and have to, figure out things on the fly. You know, you want to be able to have a good game plan and be able to put money and get certain, you know, contractors or plumbers or electrician or whatever you need to get your home squared away ahead of time. So that way it saves you the headache from having to deal with it after the fact. And, um, you know, it'll, it'll just really help your home show the best that it can show as well. Cause We'll definitely tell you what's worth doing and maybe what's not. So that's that's the big thing. And the sooner you start, the better and smoother things can run once you get the listing going and getting the property on the market. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Marie and I had, uh, listed and sold a, a, a house in Sparks, a luxury home, uh, a couple of years ago. And we had actually worked with that seller uh, for a full year. Was it was say, a yeah, full year from start to three, finish. <laughs> uh, we had visited the property several times throughout the process of some updates being done. Yes. Um, and we helped with the disposition of personal effects that were in the property. Um, so, you know, we weren't just agents going in there. We were advisors right. and we really helped them out a lot. And we got top dollar for that house. Um, we, did. we really and did multiple showings. We had a great marketing plan put together for it. 
Um, we just didn't list it and forget it. I just recently saw uh, yesterday a, a over a million dollar property listed um, uh, that literally had one photograph. Um, and how, you know, personally, our team, we will never unveil that large of a property, that substantial luxury home to the marketplace with just one photograph. We're not, I would rather keep it, you know, hold it back and do the proper marketing right up front, do our 75 to 100 photographs and our video tour and things like that and put together a good, strong marketing listing plan. So, um, so we, we treat everybody the same. Yeah, we want the house to be shown in its best light. Carla, you you certainly probably agree with that as well. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, my biggest thing when I talk to people, is, you know, let's get together and create a game plan, you know, and just coming from a sports background, you know, I tend to use those analogies, but it really is true. I mean, you know, the process of selling and buying especially when you're doing both at the same time, um, you really need to have an idea of where you're going to start, what's going to happen in the middle and where you're going to end. And when you have a good solid game plan from top to bottom in regards to how you're going to get the home ready, how you're going to list the home, how you're going to market the home, and then how you're going to purchase a home. Um, it's good to have that laid out and know what you got coming each step of the way. And, It'll make what is normally a stressful thing to do just that much simpler. You know, um, buying and selling is never going to be the easiest thing in the world to do, but we can certainly help manage it and make it run that much smoother. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So that's, I think Carlo wrapped up in a nutshell there. Well, I think what I really heard him say that is extremely important and that's setting expectation letting them know what they can expect from us, a timeline and following through with that timeline. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So, um, yeah, that's good information. It really is. And, you know, if you want more information, if you want to find out what's going to be the best for you as a buyer, what's going to be the best for you as a seller, you definitely want to put Maryland Homes team at the top of the list of folks that you want to inter interview. Um, and by the way, if you're a buyer, by the way, it's okay to interview agents. You could do that. Um, you know, it's, it, you know, you At want the best. Three. This is one it. of the biggest uh, financial decisions you could possibly make in your entire life. You want to make sure that you get the right advice for that. So um, I think it's really important. So uh, Carlo, our next segment that we're going to go into is the top expensive uh, renovations that homeowners, um, you know, basically uh, they, they hated the fact that it's a big regret in their life. Can you hang out with us and follow along uh, with the uh, with the regrets? Absolutely. All right. Are you going to let us guess? Uh, are so, you just going to like go right ahead? Well, these are the top expensive renovations homeowners always regret. See, okay? always is such a strong word. You know, your counselor told us we should say always and never. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> I know. You know, I'll just smack me on the hand there. Okay. Exactly. So, My counselor's so, texting me right now. Rob, so, never exactly, say always. Exactly. Which he's probably going to be on the show too. So <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Exactly. Um, so, Carlo, you want to guess what one or a couple, one or one or two are? Because I think I I want to guess. Well, don't tell me. You know, I'm, you know, I'd be lying to you if I said that I didn't see. Um, the list beforehand, so it kind of be uh, cheating a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, I you saw can blame it. me for that. I don't remember, but um, I just remember one of our clients getting a new roof, and her roof didn't look bad. She's like, "Ma'am, it's probably going to go up in a couple years, and I'm just going to replace it." I'm like, "No, don't do it." Um, yeah, but she did. But you know. Our uh, baby, the street they have a new roof on their house yeah i mean for me personally i mean i know one of the things that was on the list was converting um i think uh, a tub and shower just into a stand-up shower but you know i didn't necessarily agree with that because i must feel like a lot of people enjoy just having the stand-up shower especially if it's in the primary bedroom um bathroom but understandably, if you have a family with young kids, you know, if you take that hallway bathroom and make it into a stand up shower and take the tub away, that's the biggest thing that people will not like that I've come across when I'm showing property. Mm -hmm. But for me, myself, I, I think a lot of people 
sometimes underestimate, um, you know, their utilities because sometimes they'll go, oh, well, you know, someone told me this is beyond its life expectancy. So maybe I should get a whole new system. And I always tell them, hey, um, that's not the case. Just because your system has a life expectancy of uh, 15 years and maybe you're at 14 or 13. I said, if it's still working, um, you know, just go ahead and stick with it, get it serviced. And then maybe if you want to offer a home warranty to help give the buyer some peace of mind, but you don't necessarily have to spend $12,000 um, because there's some people that want your house so bad that they might even just wave it everything and say, we'll take it the way that it is. No questions asked. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, right. we can, that's one of the things where we can talk, talk to you ahead of time and help you right. save the money. That's right. That's right. So I want to revisit go down, the shower tub thing. Well, let's go down the list first because you you guys are way ahead. But let's go down the list first. <laughs> They're not in chronicle, cr- chronological order, by the way. Um, so just wanted to share with you uh, a little bit of information here. Obviously, consumers are inspired by TV shows, uh, the home design and the redesigning and things like that. You know, um, that if you're going for a swimming pool or a kitchen re- re- renovation, you know, they are going to stay with you. They're going to stay with your house. Um, so you have to kind of look at it from a long-term uh, standpoint. Are you going to just buy them or, or, or remodel them in order to, or have the pool installed in order to uh, enjoy it for the next 10, 15, 20 years? Or, or are you trying to do it in order to enhance the value of the home? So the one thing, the, the, the first will. thing is a game room. So a game room, you know, obviously it sounds like a great idea, uh, but it does limit the room. Uh, and it does not increase. This is what the the gurus are saying. This is what the stats are showing right now, that it does not increase the value of your home uh, should you decide to sell it. Uh, what, what are your comments on that? For me personally, I think the last couple of years, um, during, especially during COVID, a game right. room was probably actually one of the things people did want. But in general... When you start saying to yourself, oh, I want a game room and you're really anytime you're over customizing something to what you specifically like and not what the general demand is, then sometimes that can hinder things and not really get the money that you put into it back out of it. So that's probably where a lot of times people might regret it if they have to convert it back mm-hmm. to but, an original space. I mean, it'd be different if you took your kitchen or dining room area and did that with it. But if you have like extra space in the basement, I mean, that looks like extended space. I mean, they're not taking away from the family room. You know, if it's not taking away from the normal areas that you use, then I mean, what's the big deal? So when it comes time, when it comes to selling your home, it's re- very important that you define space. I've always said well, that. I've said that true. to my clients. Right. Whenever I walk through a home, let's define what that space, what you're trying to utilize right. that space for to give the buyers right ideas about it. So here, obviously, that space is being defined by a game room. True. You have the pool table and things like that. I think it's just important if we're representing buyers and let's say if I walked into this basement and saw that, I would immediately start to give some other suggestions of what they can do with that space. Maybe you sure. don't want to pull a, put a pool table there. Uh, maybe you want to put a kid's play area there if I know they have children or something like that. So, um, so you know, that's why if you're going to do a game room, you don't want to blow out everything and make it so specific to only being able to put a game area or a theater area in there. That's just my opinion. So. You know, unless you're, of course, you're in a luxury home that's six to eight thousand square feet. Yeah, I was going to say that. Room, right? <laughs> people, that's when you see people go crazy with uh, arcade yeah. rooms, bowling alleys, movie right, theaters. Right. I hope our then it's, it's, friends are not listening because you have a you have they have a, a a movie room. That's right. How about this one, Carlo? Converting yeah, garage space uh, into a living space, huh? Yeah, I mean that's obviously probably the most. Um, you know, talked about thing that we discussed with sellers is decluttering, um, you know, because that's typically even as a home that has all the nice upgrades and updates throughout, there's somewhere in the house that needs to be decluttered, whether it's the garage or the basement. And, um, you know, that just you just need to be able to walk around and and get the stuff. And that 
as a as a hazard almost right there. <laughs> yeah. So when they're converting that garage space into a living space, I have to agree with the very first statement there, and that is it's an awkward floor plan because it truly is. When you walk into a home, it, there's always this big step down or a couple of steps that takes you down into this like sunken room. And it looks uh, difficult. It's, it's, it's difficult to figure it out from the street, by the way. Um, you do lose a garage. So that can also hamper you as far as the ability to sell the home. Because a lot of people, a lot of move up buyers, if you're coming out of a townhouse, you want a single family home with a garage, right? So if you take away that garage, yes, you might be adding on livable square footage. But if, you di- if you're only turning it into a family room, it may make more sense to keep it as a garage. And that's my opinion. Now, I right. see that. I see more people do something like that in, like, their second homes, maybe at the beach or, you know, somewhere else where they make that room a game room, a party room, um, you know. But Yeah, but yeah, anyway. that's interesting. So so that is the, um, uh, you know, basically converting, uh, you know, the, the, the garage into living space there. Uh, the next one would be uh, adding a spa tub. I think you've... You didn't. This is different, obviously, than converting that shower bathtub scenario. But yeah, you know, a spa a tub. Different. Yeah. So I have actually seen this in a couple of homes. Um, some people like it. Most people, believe it or not, this is a very specific thing to have in your home. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that? I mean, for me, you know, I think a lot of people appreciate having uh, what's known as a soaking tub. Sure. You know, where they can kind of relax. And then if it has the jacuzzi jets, you know, some people feel like that's a plus and then other people feel like that's going to be a maintenance factor that they have to deal with. Um, But yeah, but something like this with the spa, you know, you have to really enjoy your, your bath to do that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I, my, my last two buyers um, that I just met with um, and they're, they're pretty young um, that was their request. They wanted a, a nice tub, yeah, like a yeah. soaking tub. And I mean, it's just very specific, you know. Yeah, it's you know. So the the bottom line is, you're most likely not going to get your money back. You're not, unless for some reason you're in a neighborhood with, I don't know, maybe a lot of athletes, like professional athletes, that say, oh yeah, I need to, you know, have a specific type of tub that I can come home and. Right, and relax. Right. And it's kind of like having a house with a pool. You know, right. you have to have that one specific buyer that definitely wants a house with a pool, and then you're going to be able to True. get that house sold. But you know, there's a lot of True. people they don't want a pool. You know, they'd rather. But we're not going to be able to like put fifteen more thousand dollars on that price of the house, the no. less price, no, not, not, because of the yeah. tub. You know. Now yeah. this is the one that you were talking about here, replacing the bathtub. Yeah, with I remember. Shower. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Replacing the bathtub with just a shower. Well, these showers are very in. Where they're, yeah. where it's coming down. We we saw that in Italy when we went for our anniversary years and years ago. Um, yeah. It came down and then it came on the sides as well. Oh, yeah. Um, and then they have that cubby built in, which when we redid our bathroom, our contractor did not do that, like I asked. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. And like so, some people don't like baths. Some people are not tub people. They just so prefer a shower. I think there's a lot of regrets, though, afterwards. When you start to change, switch out that tub to a two-person shower and mm-hmm. and the, you have the luxury and the great feel of the shower, by the way. And they are right. You know, it's seven to $9,000. We had a client one time that, that said to redo their bathroom. Um, if I have it priced correctly, I think it was thirty or $35,000 to redo the bathroom. And I keep thinking to myself, you know, if you switched out that bathtub, a lot of people have regrets because they want the bathtub at a later time. Maybe you want a soaking bathtub or something like that or, you know, to release stress from your joints and things like that. You're not going to be able to do that, you know, obviously, in a luxury shower. So, right. Um, well, that's true. Yeah. They, so they recommend, obviously, going for the combo. If you don't have a shower but you have the tub, just make a combination. Put the shower and the tub all in one combo. Combo. So right, I, right. at I, least in one of the bathrooms, especially the ones that correct. are shared. Like in, yeah, like upstairs. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so yep. the uh, so one of the yeah. last things here is elaborate crown molding. 
Oh, my goodness. Well, get, uh, <laughs> Carla, you could ask um, your parents. I believe I understood that they did a lot of motor. Our work. parents, you mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm like, yeah. what? What do you mean? <laughs> I wasn't sure where we were going with that. Yeah. But anyway, actually, the house you're in right now. Um, oh, yeah. This is the one place I can come for peace and quiet. You man, know, we all need that. We all knew yeah. that. Looking at the mural um, behind you, Carlo, I can tell you're in an Italian home. Yes. Uh, no question yes. about oh, it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but I know that mom and dad put a lot of money into, you could ask them, uh, into their molding. You know, they yes. did this triple molding in their beautiful home that they will retire in. Um, yep. But I don't know that they were going to get the money back out for that. If they put Yeah. It Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different moldings that you can do from crown to chair rail to wainscoting, um, if that's the right way to say it. I never. Wainscoting. No. <laughs> so um, those are what you always find in the model homes, you know. That's right. Yes. So, yes. And just like with the model homes, you're paying the very top dollar for that property. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you might get it back and sometimes you won't. Um, but it, you know, it, it just depends on what someone values or if you go over the top, you know, that's not everybody's cup of tea per se. Yeah. Nor normally you're not going to see this, but a lot of times if you happen to go into or visit a large, uh, let's say a Victorian home, a large farmhouse, let's say um, something that's in what they consider maybe the Valley. Uh, when you go into those Victorian homes, things that were pro built uh, obviously prior to maybe 1900 or so, you'll see architectural work done with dental molding where they'll actually um, stack mm -hmm. pieces on top of each other and make and give you that nice image of a large molding um, around, you know, maybe the living space or the, 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 the foyer area and things or like the that. Dining room. Yeah. And typically you find that with really high ceilings. So sometimes if you're seeing nine to 10 uh, foot ceiling somewhere in, in that nature, you'll see molding actually go into the ceiling, just like you see in the photograph here and along the, uh, the sidewall as well. And, um, you and know, the ba coffer ceilings so way back in the popular. day when, when molding yeah. was, yeah, way back, way, way back in the day, um, they actually, um, had, um, you know, back when, when you had builders that really had a, a, a knack for, uh, you know, structural, uh, integrity and just want design work, um, that was very beautiful. They actually had molds where they would actually mold out and plaster beautiful, uh, uh, moldings and put that around uh, the, the rooms to be able to showcase the room. Our so. first house that we grew up in, um, had molding like that. It was so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you typically, you typically don't find that in a townhouse or a condo, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, surprisingly, you know, that some of the townhomes can lend to doing molding because of their more rectangular floor plan, where I feel today, you know, the floor plans, you know, they're getting rid of the dining room, the, the separate dining room or formal dining room areas, and they're making homes a lot more open mm -hmm. with vaulted ceilings and cathedral ceilings. So those don't typically, you know, do well with putting any type of molding around it. So that's why I feel, you know, it's kind of the building, new construction is kind of going more away from that, you know, so... Yeah, they're going with more modern amenities and things like that, making the making the home, uh, you know, wiring the home for Wi-Fi and things of that nature, making it a smart home. That's where a lot of the emphasis has come into these properties now. Um, very rarely you're going to find the new generation popping into homes and kind of looking up and saying, well, where's all the crown molding? You know, you don't see right. that a lot. Um, you know, obviously back in the day, you did. You People, oh, yeah. it was a luxury. It was something that people wanted when they walked into a home. They wanted the finishing touches um, they wanted the crown moldings and things like that. So, um, so yeah. I still yeah. think molding's nice, regardless where you are. I do. Yeah, regardless of uh, what yeah. the stats say, I I would say when it's done in moderation. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. It's so much nicer. It just looks it looks prettier. Yeah. Yeah. That no. No. It does. Contrast to the room, really. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, Carlo, it has been a joy, my friend, to have you on uh, the show. We're going to move on to our Costco, uh, 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 the hot Costco uh, uh, 
products of the spring of 2023. Hot buys. That's what they the say. The hot buys. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to Costco do that, but we're not going to drag you through uh, the shopping experience that Maria experiences a couple of times a week. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> exactly. That's not true. I've actually been fasting from Costco. <laughs> yeah, well, not that much, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ha- that's not true. It's been at least a week or two. Yeah, I <laughs> wouldn't say two weeks. Not at all, Carlo. Anyway. So, well, listen, it's been a joy having you all, my friend. Thanks, Carlo. Uh, we really appreciate that. And uh, and again, listen, folks, if you are looking for um, for a fantastic realtor, uh, someone to represent you, best represent you when it comes to purchasing a home, selling a home, definitely give Carlo a call. You can find us through our team website, searchmydreamhome.com, or you can, and you can contact him directly through there. Um, he's a fantastic agent, so uh, uh, you are going to be well-served and well-pleased to be able to talk to him and have you have him show you the path of uh, home ownership and, and to be able to sell as well. So, Carlo, yeah, yeah. thank you very much, my friend. It was a pleasure. Yep. yep, good to see everybody and go O's. Go O's, yes. that's right, exactly. Yeah, we, we got are, the Beltway showdown, so don't forget that tonight. That's oh my right. Goodness. That's right. That's yeah. right, exactly. Thank you, Carlo. We'll talk to you soon, my friend. All right, take care, everybody. Right, Have sure. a good take evening. Take care. All right, All right bye, bye now. Uh, so that was Carlo, who's a fantastic agent. We really appreciate yes, him coming is. on board here. We're going to dive right into the calendar of events, and as soon as we get back, um, uh, continue with. Uh, let me just in, no. Okay. As soon as we get back, we're going to talk about, I just had to do a couple of clicks on my screen there. Sorry. Um, it's the joy of having a live show, by the way. You know, Honey, it's the it's joy. Okay. It's know, great. It's awesome. I love it. Strong. Just let it go. I love it. So anyway, uh, we're going to talk about Costco as soon as we get back with the calendar of events. We're back. That decoy camp sounds so cool. Yeah, exactly. Amber, thank you so much for uh, 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 piping in. Great show. Hoping to catch the next one as well. I appreciate that. Uh, We uh, we're on every other Wednesday, by the way. Every other Wednesday at 7 p.m. Just watch for advertisement on our website on our Facebook page. Uh, We greatly appreciate that and everything that you're doing. So, did you hear what I said? You just like ignored it. I didn't. No. You did. I did. You ignored it or you heard it? I did both. Okay, what did I say? What did I say? That's exactly what you just said. What did I say? (laughs) 
ladies, <laughs> help me, please. Yes, exactly. Help me. <laughs> anyway, the decoy can yeah. look so cool. We talked about that earlier. Yeah, when I was putting together the show, I saw, I thought that yeah, was really a neat idea to put the uh, the decoy. Well, uh, especially in Happy Grace, you know, mm-hmm. that's where Pat Vincenti's from. You know, one of the master carvers, I guess that's what they would call them. Yep. Um, you know, Happy Grace has got a lot of great stuff. Okay, Costco Hot Buys. Costco Hot Buys, Spring Buys of 2023. Drum roll, please. I don't have a drum roll. Do I know? No. But okay, do the air home. That's definitely not a drum roll. No, that, but. That's a little annoying, actually. Yeah, exactly. Sorry about that. Okay, Costco's Hot Buys. By the way, the bloomer wax amaryllis bulbs. You get three bulbs in pink, lilac, and green. Require no watering or soil. Thirty two ninety nine. I think it's a neat Mother's okay, Day kind of thing. That would no? definitely not be on my list. Okay, that would not be on Maria's Where list. Are you grabbing this information? Sorry, sorry. And, okay, uh, next, quickly. Next one. Hang on, hang on. Give me a second here. <laughs> Hold on. The next one would be the same. Not thing. the Blue Maker. Same thing. Next one will be the Apple iPad. The mm. Apple iPad Mini, by the way, is eight. 8.3 inch liquid retina display available in a range of colors. Is that even a good price? $539. $539? Mm-hmm. $539. It's an iPad mini. iPad mini. What's that's it? right. Eight and a half inches. I know. I'm just saying that's that's, like that's, that big. that's the price right. they consider that. That's a hot buy, just to let okay. you know. If you have any okay. any comments on that, thumbs please down. let me know. Two Maria thumbs said thumbs down. Two thumbs down for Maria okay. on the hot buys, by okay. the way. The please next thing show me is some shrimp or something. Is the Cafalone Premier Nonstick Cookware. Mm. I probably pronounced that wrong. You it did. stacks easy. It's ideal for a limited kitchen space. You get a 12 $400. piece for $429 for that. Okay, I'm just telling people Teflon is not good for you. Oh. Stainless steel it, it made in the USA. It's still their hot buy, though. Just okay. to let you know. This is on their I list. I hope not. On okay, their list. Oh. This is what I like, by the way. You're going to really love this, I think. There's no photograph for it, but the gyro kit. The gyro kit, I remember, was at the Costco in White Marsh, and and they quickly sold out. Um, you get a pound of beef, lamb slices, you get all that stuff that's listed there: cucumbers, tomatoes, onions, feta cheese. You're making me hungry. Let's you go get to, all um, of that, Mr. for Sabaki about twenty dollars. After we're yeah, done, exactly right. We haven't been there in a while. We have not been there in a while. We need I to go. We do. Their bowl, that bowl that they have. What Everything. is it? Everything. Best calamari ever. Oh, I forget the name of the bowl, but anyway, I got that one time, and I just thought that was yes. fantastic. We had them on the show a while back too. They you want to awesome. check that episode out, it's on our YouTube channel. Anyhow, there's that okay. one. And then the next one is the cinnamon pull-aparts. Oh, great. Hmm? A dozen Just pieces of pastry. I That's a, a cross between a cinnamon roll and monkey bread. Oh, if you can we, imagine we that. bought this before. Yep. Uh, it was delicious. Yep. And it's Top. only six ninety nine. Oh, How could 20 you pass ounce that up? tray, by the way, for six ninety nine. Have yep. a party. That's that's a that's a hot buy as well. Okay. So wanted to share that with you. The next thing is how many more? Indoor or outdoor rugs. Yes, if you're looking they, for they an outdoor have very rug, nice ones. I will. They have nice that. rugs there. Yep, yep. So no they pictures. No pictures of the That's rugs. Disappointing. Well, we have they that, have a ton of different we rugs. We have that there. flower that has no soil. Yeah, but they. I thought that was a good like Mother's Day item. Item as well. You so would give like that to your mother, or you would encourage your children to give that to their mother. <laughs> You like flowers. I, you look, like things that bloom. Okay. What I've can been I say? Planting all day. All right. Well, the not next, all day. Next thing is Art Skills Brilliant Art Diamond Painting Kit. This is the painting kit here. There's a three panel set, comes in three designs Sunset, Forest, and Waterfall. Okay. I keep thinking to myself, I feel like we need to be in a you home. You need to be like, exactly. <laughs> like, okay. If be you're nice. in a home, we better be careful. Let's just keep moving. Yeah, on. exactly. We're going to be nice. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Move but on. This, this might not be. It's not, not might not I'm be actually, for the generation. I'm actually waiting Z. for the end of this. This is like very brutal to <laughs> okay, me. Okay, folks, if you don't like the Costco hot buys, I will never do this on the show again. Uh-huh. I just thought it'd he be did a different not change. Run this past me, obviously. I just thought it'd be a different change to what we do. Okay. Just kind of add this into the. I kept thinking end. it was gonna be food. It's like or beach chairs or umbrellas or a great cooler or something fun for the spring. Is that uh, it? How about this? Okay. The Ember Wave Two. Thermal, I thought this was the most useless thing, by the way. Please. So the thermal wristband, when I looked this up, it's overheating after a run or exercise. Let this wristband cool you down. Get relief anywhere, anytime. I think you found spam. Who in the world? I think this is all spam. No, it's not. Who in the world spends $279 just to feel like they're cooling down? Someone has too much money. Yeah, to feel like they're cooling down. I can't figure that part out, you know? Just give me a fan. Exactly, right? Okay, right. next. Next thing oh is gosh. the <laughs> Simply ah, Indulgent Candle heck? Set. How about okay, this? These are really nice. Those yeah. are beautiful. Okay, finally. 
Finally, one one yeah, thing. I do love their candles. One <laughs> thing I found for my wife that she would actually like okay. in the Costco Not that I'm a picky hot spring buys. Right there, the Simply Indulgent Candle Set. Mother's Day is coming. Variety of unique oh, scents. Those are beautiful. Peony Bloom, love Water Lily, and scents. Peach Blossom. Each set is $28.99. Okay. That is beautiful, but I don't want that for Mother's Day. There you go, folks. And that is the hot buys of, uh, that's the hot buys. Let's just leave it there. It's the okay. hot buys, right? If you need a hot buy for real, call me. I'll exactly. take you to Costco with me. Exactly, right? right? If Rob lets me go since I've been put on suspension. Yep. Uh, I'm no, not suspension. No, I like what their chicken. Call it? Their rotisserie chicken, chicken is really good. Okay, that has nothing to do with being on suspension. You chicken. I know exactly. ADHD. Let's Focus. dive. Let's dive into the uh, market stats real quick. We'll be right back. Okay. Please. All right, folks. Thank you so much yes. for joining us this evening. Thank you for putting up through that very painful Costco hot buys. Exactly. I'm going to apologize for that. <laughs> so, I was actually excited about it. I won't do until uh, I watched it. I won't do the hot buys again. But you know, I Ms. don't know. Let me help you with the hot buys. Miss Donna said, "Hey, when are we going?" She liked it. Hey, yes. Miss Donna, thank you very much for she for liked liking it. that. I said, "Let's go to Costco." That's what she liked, not yeah. the hot buys. <laughs> exactly. All righty. Well, thank you. We're going to see you in a couple in. of weeks. Uh, Wednesday, just check us out on Facebook. We're going to post it there. We have an awesome show lined up for you next time. We won't give any hints of what the show's about, and I promise not to have Costco on there. Just to let you know, okay? Okay. Don't be hard on Costco. Not There's being hard on them. I'm just bad. saying I won't have that episode on there yes. since you dogged it the whole time okay. so anyway all right we're going to talk to you next time okay um it, we are always what better together, together. we're I always think. better together we're stronger together as I'm, well i'm questioning that right now but it's okay. we're better together and remember keep maryland homes team at the top of the list of companies to interview when buying or selling we greatly appreciate it because it matters who you work with in this industry it truly does matter we'll talk to you yes. soon talk to you next week god bless Like you know me in the depths of my heart We're dreaming